Hey guys, and welcome back to Misha's Corner. So this segment is called Cooking for Bay, and that's literally what it means. I am going away on a trip this weekend, and I wanted to meal prep for him while I'm gone away. So I'm going to be making a sweet chili meatloaf, and some cheesy baked mashed potatoes, and some spinach. So this right here is all my flavor profile, and we're going to go over this in just a second. So over here I have my red bell peppers, I have scallions, onions, thyme, scotch bonnet or habanero and garlic. All of this can be substituted for what you prefer. However, I really do prefer for you guys to use fresh ingredients instead of dried or powdered, especially when making a loaf. It's already a loaf, so it's like, you know, blah. <laughs> you really want to amp that flavor up. So, yeah. So, basically, I'm going to put all of this into a food processor, grind it down, add it to my meat, and we're going to move on from there. All right. So, everything is ready to go. I did de the habanero pepper. I took the seeds and the ribs out and put what's left in the food processor. So, you <laughs> puree you just want to break the vegetables down and then we're just going to toss it in with the meatloaf all right guys so this is basically what you're looking for you don't want to go any further than this right here because then you it's going to be too liquidy and you don't want too much moisture i mean moisture is good in your meatloaf but not too much and now we're just going to add it all together all right guys so now we're going to season this up i'm going to add some black pepper down in here not too much we do have that habanero down in there so you don't want it too spicy. I'm also going to use some garlic powder, some all-purpose seasoning, use your favorite brand, totally fine, some salt, and my egg. And I'm using panko breadcrumbs. You can use grounded up oatmeal. You can use regular breadcrumbs you can mash up some bread like cut up some bread add some milk to it and add it in here i'm not adding milk to this kind of meatloaf because we already have enough moisture in there from the vegetables but again it's totally up to you this recipe is very versatile so yeah and i'm just gonna get in here mix this on up and then preheat your oven to about 375 degrees and we're gonna start it high cut it back and let it cook through all right guys, so I have my meatloaf in my cast iron skillet. I'm gonna pop it in the oven and I'm gonna bake this off maybe 35 to 40 minutes. No, I'm gonna say 35 minutes and then we're gonna add the sauce all over the top. So yeah, pop this in the oven uncovered for 35 minutes. All right guys, so now for the um, glaze for the meatloaf. In my pot I have some onions. Don't worry, they're chopped crazy but they're gonna cook all the way down before I even pour it on my uh, meatloaf and even then it's gonna cook on the meatloaf so you're good to this I'm gonna add a store-bought brand sweet chili sauce you could buy whatever brand you prefer or make your own if you're up to it you're gonna add it all down in here well if mine's could come out there you go <laughs> you're gonna add this all down in here well while this is trying to come out I'll talk to y'all I guess this thing is acting up but yeah so get this all out. I'm going to add some water to this, some salt and pepper, and just put it on the stove, cover it, and let it simmer on low for about 10 minutes. And that's your sauce for your meatloaf. I also decided to make a sauce too, guys, because this meatloaf is going to be eaten over a period of three days. If I had just glazed my meatloaf with, let's say, ketchup, then by the time he got to day two, it would be like blah, dry, no sauce, nothing for him to really, you know, make it nice and supple. So I'm trying to do things that are effective. So I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this, put it on the stove, let it simmer, and that's it. All right, guys, so after about 35 to 40 minutes, this is what my meatloaf looks like. It's so beautiful and crusty and it's not even done yet um the little things you see on top i just sprinkled on on top some more fresh thyme that's all i did before i popped it in the oven now you're just going to take your sauce as you can see mine's thinned out but as it cooks it's going to thicken up and again i don't want a thick heavy sauce on here because as he's heating it up over the next few days it's just going to be perfect so you don't want everything to be extremely tight extremely dry extremely you know 
you want it to tighten up as each day goes by so that's what I'm doing if I was not doing this as meal prep I probably would have just used the sauce straight out the bottle but like I said you know mm, 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 mm. this smells amazing I can't even tell you how amazing this smells So I'm going to use all the sauce because I want it all down in here. The more moisture, the better. I'm going to pop this back in the oven for another 15 minutes so everything can tighten up. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Right now, we're going to move on to the mashed potatoes. All right, guys. So do you see what I mean? Like, look at this. Remember how thin it was earlier? Now look how thick it is. And as it sits, it's going to get more and more thick. The meatloaf is pretty much done here at this point. I've never seen a meatloaf more beautiful than this one. Like I'm telling you, you cannot get this out of a grocery store or in a restaurant. You just can't. Simple. <laughs> Alright guys, so this is the lineup for the mashed potatoes. I have some salted butter over there. I have my milk, scallions, and cheese. And... This cheese is going to be for last because we're not going to mix it into the actual mashed potatoes. But this right here, we're going to mix it into the mashed potatoes. And then we're going to layer it and pop it in the oven just so the cheese can melt. And that's it. Alright guys, so I added my butter down in here. You can add as much or as little butter as you prefer. I'm also going to add my salt. Even though I use salted butter, it's still not enough salt for all this potato. It's a whole pot of potato. And you're going to add some black pepper down in here. I'm going to mash this up. After I mash this up, I'm going to show you guys what I do next. Alright, so now that we have all the potato down, I mean all the butter melted down in here, I'm going to add the milk. Adding a lot of milk because it's a lot of potato. I'm going to add half of my scallions. Remember, all ingredient measurements will be listed in my description box, so don't worry. As you can see, I also switched to a spatula. The rest of that scallion, I'm going to top the top of my mashed potatoes as it goes in the oven. Mix this up, and we're going to start layering the um, potatoes. All right, guys, I have my pan here ready to go. I have some melted butter on the bottom of my pan. You're just going to layer your mashed potatoes down in here. You can use any pan you feel like using that's oven safe, of course. Layer this down in here. You don't have to use butter. You can use olive oil, you can use spray. Um, the butter I added is more of a flavor situation. I wanted more flavor, so I added more butter in the bottom. And again, all we're doing is melting cheese. We're not trying to cook this potato again. So then you're going to take your cheese and you're going to layer it down in here. Just like a lasagna, layer your cheese. Use whatever cheese you want to use. This is sharp cheddar that I'm using. Use whatever cheese you want to use. I'm going to pop this into a 350 degree oven. Probably higher than that. I think I'm going to go 375. And just heat the, the potatoes back through so the middle cheese can melt. And then and brown on top. And that's it. Alright, top layer ready to go. Now I'm going to add my scallions. The reserved scallions that we had. All over the top. And then we're going to pile the top of this with some more cheese. Pop it in the oven, bake it up, and we're pretty much done. And then I'm going to cool everything down and pop it in the refrigerator. And he'll be able to eat as he wants for the next two to three, I guess, three or four days. Yeah. How gorgeous is this? Look at that crust. Look at that crust. It smells so good. Mm -mm 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 -mm. He better be happy. <laughs> but yeah, we're, I'm going to show you guys what everything looks like. I'm just going to make some spinach. And I've made that um, numerous times on my channel. So I don't really need to show that. But I'm just going to make some spinach. And that's pretty much it. Oh my god, guys. Like, I'm like so jealous. Look at this spread. Like, look at this mashed potato. This is the spinach right here. Um, I just sauteed it up with some onion, butter, garlic, thyme, salt, and pepper, garlic powder. That's all that is. And actually, this was like two 16-ounce bags of spinach, and it cooked down to nothing. 
and right here is my sweet chili turkey meatloaf i mean like seriously really but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this recipe i hope you guys try my recipes and if you do tag me and let me know what you think on my social media will be listed below also guys if you're in the houston texas area and you would like this meal you can book me my email everything will be below and yeah i'll see you guys next time on my next video bye guys